What's up, everybody? Dr. Vong here, back for another kind COVID community talk. We're going to talk about what the hell does China know that we don't know? Why is a country of 1.4 billion people have such a low coronavirus number and basically life has gone back to normal? This is not conjecture. I'm going to show you some latest uh, news reporting on it. Um, I agree with you guys who are skeptical that you can't believe everything that comes out from China. I also said that when uh, this coronavirus thing first started, was I was like, boy, yeah, I don't believe everything that's coming out of China. But at some point, um, you know, you get enough reporting that you go, boy, we got to look at this, yo. We got to look at this. So while we're waiting for some people to get in here, just show me, tell me where you're calling from. I'm Dr. Jack Vong. I'm a retired bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. Um, I did retire from weight loss surgery, but I have a large uh, social media following for the bariatric community. The bariatric community, why, why is a bariatric surgeon talking about coronavirus? It's because the number one risk factor for poor outcomes with coronavirus is actually not age, it's not high blood pressure, it's not diabetes, it's actually obesity. So, so that's why I talk about coronavirus because it really directs, directly affects my following. And I tried to take the politics out of it. Now, some of y'all might disagree because yesterday I got a little bit harsh on Dr. on, Dr., on uh, President Trump there uh, on my broadcast. But I will tell you that if you look at what I said, um, it was accurate. And it is it. And I said it did not matter if um, uh, which party affiliation it was. Anybody in that role who did what he did, I would, I would have laid into, because this is not, not, not how a leader actually behaves. So politics aside, we are talking about the science behind this. While we're waiting, tell me where you're watching from, and I'll put your name up here, right here. Matt Sims, moose humping Canadian here. <laughs> That's funny as shit, Matt. That's awesome. Uh, Hobart, Australia. Wow, baby. What's up, Vinay? Vinay Miller, Hiler, uh, yeah, Hiller. <laughs> Cheryl Boyd is in Delaware watching on YouTube. Chicago's in the house. Claudia Torres, you got to be careful. Um, Claudia, you got to be careful. Chicago is going to become a hot spot here in a second. Rachel Farley's watching in Philly. We have Carrie from Frederick, Oklahoma. Kokomo, Indiana, Cassie Craig is watching us. Kansas City, Melody Taylor, thank you so much for watching. Elena Wolf in the Bay Area, California. I hope you're staying safe from the forest fires. Bel Air, Maryland. I'm, I'm staying in Bel Air, Houston, Texas. Watching on YouTube. What's up? Boise, Idaho, Tom Carroll. Uh, I love up there um, in, uh, in Coeur d'Alene. What's up, Edwin? Edwin Madison from Oregon's watching. That's awesome. Uh, you'll see. You'll see. Karen Scarpa. Miss you in group, Karen. Mesa, Arizona. Claire Charles is watching. Thank you guys so much. Liverpool. See, I told you I'm internationally famous. Liverpool is watching me. We're going to talk about UK a little bit. UK is in trouble. Uh, Cumbra, Sonia, the capital of Cumbra. You know how many Americans telling you think that Sydney is the capital of Australia? I'm telling you, it's sad. Check this shit out. Eva, Eva M from the Czech Republic is watching me. What? What? I saw Trinidad. Where did Trinidad go? Knoxville, Tennessee's in the house. Trinidad, get back on in here. Tulsa, Oklahoma. What's up, Sandra? California's in the house. Oahu. Hawaii, Nifa, how awesome is that? San Francisco Bay Area, what's up? Stay safe, stay safe. We're going to talk about um, coronavirus today. Rockville, Maryland, visiting your grandson. If you're watching this on the replay, you can fast forward to about the uh, six-minute mark. I'll get started here in a couple seconds. Nashville, Tem Tennessee, Arizona. I'm going to show you how you can protect yourself. I'm going to talk about what uh, the Chinese are doing that we're not doing, why we're having trouble. Oh, I saw Scotland. Terry! Scotland's in the house. I told you. All right. Susie, Gilroy, California. What's up? East LA, Felicia Ann. Oh, I got one. Are you really from Ireland? Come on. Are you really from Ireland? Come on now. Let's do this. 
Minnesota's in the house. Michigan's watching on. Uh, Andrew's watching from uh, on YouTube. South Dakota, where it's nice and hot with coronavirus. Christina Gonzalez, stay safe, stay safe. South Texas, quality of life with Roz. What's up, Roz? How are you doing? Oh, my, my friend and mentor. Where'd he go? Randy Garn. Everybody give Randy Garn a follow right there. He's the man. He's the fashizzle right there. Awesome. What's up, brother? Las Vegas is in the house. Pittsburgh's in the house. Everybody's like, he's only here just saying hello to people. That's right. Hit share, everybody. Let's get going. Not your friend share. Not Sonny and share. Hit the share button for me, and we'll get you going here in a second. Chino, California. What's up? What's up? Test another Michigan fan. What? Free Sweden. Uh-oh. It's free Sweden. Remember to vote. That's right. That's right. That's right. Excellent. Excellent. Let's go. Coeur d'Alene. I saw Coeur d'Alene. Debbie. Love Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So beautiful up there. What is up? Utah's in the house. I love Utah. So beautiful. All right. Uh, Louisiana, not LA. Cairo. What's up, man? How are you doing? Wyoming, I was just there. I did a, a two-week camping trip in August there. Chi-Town, Brittany, be careful. Chicago is about to get hot, hot, hot. Cold weather climate's coming for you, man. What's up, Deborah Martinez? How you been? Miss you. Hope you and your hubby's doing good. All right. California, oop, Susie Q. What's up, C uh, There's so many Susie Qs around here. Awesome. All right. So, hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Dr. Von, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. Um, and I'm retired. I talk about coronavirus because it affects our community. So, let's get started. What I want to tell you, real quick, quick, quick word about sponsorship here. I make these COVID rapid tests. You can check them out. Um, actually, that's my room. Hey, watch. Hold on. Hold on now. Don't screenshot this. I want to show you my mess. Look at that mess. Y'all don't believe me, but it, it's really me. It's really me. That's me putting all these uh, COVID rapid test uh, kits together for you. It's everything you need. It's got the rapid test, 95% accurate. It's a little finger prick, buffer solution, pair of gloves, Band-Aid, alcohol swabs. Um, you prick your finger. Here's the test. You put it on this, you put it on this test plate. You read it in 10 minutes, just like a pregnancy test. It'll give you a line if you're positive. It texts IgG and IgM. It's an antibody test. It will show you if you're actively infected. It will show you if you've had coronavirus in the past. It will tell you if you need to isolate. And um, it gives you results in 15 minutes. You read it like a pregnancy test. No need to send it to a lab or anything. Test yourself. Test your friends. Test your family. That's how we get over this. If you want to order some from me, I wholesale it for you for at $50 each kit, $50 each kit, minimum order of 40. Best way to get a hold of me right now is to go on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dr. Vong, and you can get these kits. All right. With that, let's get going, brothers and sisters. All right. Let's get going. We're going to talk about China, that China virus. Oh, my God. I get so irritated when I hear that, the China virus. All right, so this is SARS-CoV-2 is the actual virus the disease is uh, COVID. So what does China know? How does a country of 1.4 billion people have fewer cases than the United States, which has, we're the 0.4, all right? China has a billion more people than the United States. We have about 100, uh, 350 million people in the United States. So, so we are the 0.4 to China's billion. China has a billion more people than us. That's freaking crazy. So how do they have such few numbers? All right. At first, I will tell you, I was skeptical of the numbers. And I still am. Trust me. I'm still skeptical of the Chinese numbers. So, But at some point, the numbers get so high, you have to think about like, okay, you, you, what's going on here? Okay. I am, for the record, skeptical of the Chinese numbers. And I think everybody um, understands why why this is the case. I'm When coronavirus first came out, I was very skepti skeptical of the Chinese numbers. I didn't really understand um, how they could have such low numbers. They were, you know, their coronavirus numbers peaked and then dropped and then we surpassed them. 
but the, they continue to stay low and whatever. But um, I was skeptical and, and most Americans rightly so. I still am. Problem is this, fast forward six months, fast forward six months, we Americans, US has 7 million cases, 215,000 deaths, almost 215,000 deaths. And China has essentially stayed the same. Now, a skeptical person could say, well, you know, they're a communist regime. They're really lying about their numbers. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you could say that back when we had 100,000 cases. Now that we have 7 million cases and it's been six months, we'll need to take a look. We need to take a closer look. What is happening? What does China, what did China do that we don't know? And our leaders, and I'm not making this political, I'm telling you, I don't care your political affiliation. I'm just going to tell you, if our leadership continues to call it the China virus and continues to blame China, what the fuck? They're not, they don't have a raging pandemic. They have overcome their first wave. They have squashed it. And we're sitting here pointing fingers. We're the ones suffering. The United States is the one suffering. Europe is the one suffering. Europe is going through their second wave. I've been telling people in my secret challenge group for months now that Europe is about to start their second wave. And then they, they spiked up. I'm telling you right now, if you're watching and you're in my challenge group and I said that, hey, Europe's on fire, Europe's, Europe's going, Europe's launching. And I think I told you guys that back in August. And now here we are, middle of October. And we are just now, the U.S. news is just now reporting on uh, Europe. Comment if you remember that. I've been talking about European second wave since August in my challenge group. Well, just like that, I'm telling you guys, pay attention. New Jersey is about to take off. New York is about to take off. Chicago is about to take off. Boston's in trouble. The Northeast is in trouble. These numbers are low, but the winter is coming. The winter is coming. The coronavirus winter is coming. Here we go. Yes, yes, I remember. Mary Beth, I remember. Yes, I remember. Yes, yes, yes. See? World peace, yes. Um, right? World peace, I remember, okay? Matt Sims, Doc, you nailed it, okay? So I've been saying this for um, since mid-August about Europe, and now we're just not hearing about it. I'm telling y'all, New Jersey's going to take off here in a second. Um, in a New York minute, New York City's going to be in trouble. Boston's already starting to sound the alarm. And uh, we're distracted by Wisconsin. We know Wisconsin's on fire, but there's not the dense population in Wisconsin, South Dakota, North Dakota, not like New York City. Not like Boston, not like Chicago. It's about to get bad. Houston's got a walls to go because, you know, our winters are much wild, uh, milder here, right? So I'm calling it. I called Europe. I'm calling um, the Northeast right now, too. It's on fire. You guys got to figure that shit out. All right. And I'm going to talk about these things right here. So hang with me. I'm going to talk about these things right here. So hit share. So let's talk about China, right? China, as you guys all know, China is a controlling regime. Okay. Now, people thought when you say this, people go, of course it is. It's a communist country. It's the second largest economy in the world. It's probably um, the second superpower, quite honestly. Um, and yeah, they lie, they whatever. That, and that's fine. But here's the problem. I had a friend, I had a friend back in June, May, May. I was talking to him and he does a lot of business in China. And so he often goes back to China. And I said to him, I said, uh, hey, what's going on over there with that virus? We're like, what's it like? And he says to me, doc, it's crazy. I said, what happened? He goes, dude, they shut us down. I said, what do you mean they shut you down? And, and he goes, well, I went there to visit my, my mom and dad because his family's still there, right? And he goes, um, he goes, I get off the plane. They take me to this hotel. They lock me in the, the, and they quarantine me for 14 days. 
and I'm not allowed to go out. And they have, they, they monitor me. I'm not allowed to leave. They bring me the food, right? I can't leave my hotel room for 14 days. I was like, that's crazy. He goes, yeah, but it was kind of really easy. They took care of me. They, they brought food and supplies, the things I needed, right? This was back in, uh, he was telling me in June, this happened to him like, like back in April or something like that. And he, and um, he goes, they, they, they kept me there. And then, and then I got this notice, boom, you're free. Your days are up, door unlocked. He, he gets to go see his, his uh, mom and dad. And I was like, that's freaking crazy. And then I hear reports that literally like they, ch they taped people's door. They put like a um, tape around people's doors in their house. When they, when they, uh, when they shut down that Wuhan province, they literally put tape around people's doors. They had police go by there and, um, and, and if the, if the tape was ever open, like torn, you got sent to jail. You got sent to jail. You didn't go. You didn't get a fine. You you didn't get a warning. You got sent to jail. So that's extreme, right? So here's what I want to do. I want to share my screen with you. Um, I want to I want to share my screen with you real quick. Okay. So bear with me, because now there are stories coming out. So CBS Sunday Morning, which I love that show. That's one of the few shows I watch on TV. I don't. I actually watch it on YouTube now. I don't even watch it on TV. But this morning on CBS Sunday morning, I already had this this talk planned, and this came out this morning. So I want to share my screen. All right, comment if you can see my screen share. Can you all see my screen share now? All right, I want to play this short four minute video. So hang tight with me. It's only four minutes long. Can you all see this? All right. Something nearly unthinkable has happened in China, a return to normal. From morning Tai Chi at Beijing's Temple of the Sun to the lunch crush in the central business district and the rush home at sunset across the avenue of eternal peace. Chairman Mao Zedong keeps watch over Tiananmen Square and a country living in a post-COVID new normal. It's hard to believe cities across China with millions of people looked like ghost towns earlier this Look year. Look at that. That looks like a scene from in a January, horror movie. CBS News was the first U.S. network in Wuhan where the pandemic started. The government struck back hard and fast, forcing up to 50 million people into lockdown for two months, building new hospitals in less than two weeks, welding some families inside their homes. Testing and contact tracing descending on new outbreaks with speed. Adopting a QR health code system on smartphones. Banning nearly all foreigners from entering the country. And putting everyone who was allowed to return, including yours truly, into a 14-day quarantine at a government-designated hotel. All thanks to a mix of authoritarian rule and the memory of SARS in 2003. As COVID peaked in February, Shanghai and the city's historic Bund stood eerily quiet. Look at that. But not anymore. This is Shanghai now. The masses have returned and most of the masks have not. The sheer normalcy of all this really is very strange. Almost as if COVID never happened at all. In a country of 1.4 billion people, fewer than 5,000 were officially reported to have died, compared to more than 210,000 and counting in the United States. Critics of China say its death toll is too low to be true, a fair claim for a country where bad news is often covered up. Last week, President Trump eagerly reminded Americans where COVID began. It was China's fault, and China is going to pay a big price what they've done to this country. Rourke Jones from Georgia is a sophomore at New York University's campus in Shanghai. With a mandatory mask, flash of a health code, and temperature check, he attends his classes. While most international students fled, Jones decided to stay. In February, I was 
basically my door the entire time. And then by April, things were pretty open. Now people sometimes don't even wear masks outside. Pandemic's basically non-existent here. Now, mixed mode classes, from statistics to modern dance, are another new normal. Some students physically in the room, some virtually. No one raises a fuss. Everyone in China is very willing to abide by any policy set forth for containment of the disease. One thing that was kind of inspiring to me is that everyone did the quarantine. And the result? Business is back and bustling, like at China's first Shake Shack. Joyce Du is a proud general manager. When did this Shake Shack close for coronavirus? Close? Yes. We're not close. You never close? Never. We're working every day and all times. What do you think is the most important prevention measure that you want to share with American restaurants? Well, the mask. As life goes on, the show does too. In Hangzhou, 100 miles west. This is Cirque du Soleil's only show in operation out of 44 in the world. Half of the artists are Chinese, the other half international, from the US, Canada, Russia, Australia, and France. Acrobats have been dancing, spinning, and flying to masked audiences since June. We all live a normal life. Yvonne Yuan is the show's technical director. Has there ever been a coronavirus incident? Not with audience, not with our staff. So we've been very fortunate. I would say China really is one of the safest places right now in terms of the world, in terms of the COVID situation. NYU's Rourke Jones might agree. If I went back to the United States right now, to be frank, I'd be a little nervous. And he would have a tough time coming back. China is keeping its borders shut to most foreigners to keep coronavirus out too. In a country steeped in more than 3,000 years of history, China's leaders intend for it to be around for at least 3,000 more. Isn't that crazy? So that was from this morning, CBS Morning News. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend you uh, show that. Um, that's really important journalism, journalism and reports. Now, you can argue that the China numbers are low, but how low? I mean, go ahead. Give me an argument that fucking makes any sense compared to what the U.S. is going through. Right. It's ridiculous. I want to pull up the New, the New York Times numbers for you all real quick. So I'm going to share my screen yet again. All right. So here's um, that's Brazil. Sorry, so here's the United States. This is the New York Times. The United States has 7.7 .7 million cases, 214,000 deaths. And if we go to the worldwide numbers, and in particular, we talk, we look at, we look at China. Um, sorry, here we go. There's Russia, mainland China. Well, it's not letting me pull up China. Um, but you know, the Chinese deaths are basic number of cases, basically where they've been this, this whole time, this whole time in the 80,000, 80,000 range. I actually quit looking. So what we know is that their numbers remain low. What we know from this report is that China has pretty much gone back to normal. There's a couple of things that I want to point out that they did. They, and number of, uh, this is really, really important. China did a hard lockdown. And by hard, now I realize it's extreme. It, you know, they are a communist regime, but boy, they locked people in there, their doors. They, they welded people's doors together. <laughs> Y'all saw that? They welded your, your door shut, taped it. Anybody visiting, just like my friend told me, which, you know, he told me that back in like May, June, that they, they kept him in a 14 day hotel, governmental hotel, provided everything he needed. They would not let him out for 14 days. That's what it takes. They welded people's door shut. They taped their doors. If they, if they went to jail, if they went out, that's extreme. But that's what it takes. You know, Americans, we get so bent out of shape because we can't go to a fucking bar, that we can't go to a baseball game or a football game or a concert. We're crying like big bitches here. This is, it's really bad. 
And so what ended up was happening was we opened up too soon. Let me get into that here in a second. So basically in February, that, that American student, university student who's studying in Shanghai said he, for all of February, for an entire month, he could not leave his, his apartment. You were stuck inside your apartment. You basically could not go out, right? Americans, we have civil liberties, blah, 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 blah. But we're in a, we're in a global pandemic. Like where, where, where do you draw the line? So they did a, a hard lockdown, right? That's what we're missing, number one. In the United States, we never did a real lockdown, guys. I know some places think you did. I know New York City was tough and New York City really locked down and parts of upper New Jersey locked down. People were scared. But for the most part, LA locked down. Um, we called it a stay at home order, a mandatory stay at home order, which basically meant you still could go to the grocery stores. You could go to your doctor's appointments, get gas, things like that. Essential businesses. Home Depot was open. Walmart was open. People mocked it. People were like, why can't I go to church? If you can, you can go have a hundred people go to Home Depot. Right. So which are, it's a valid argument. So, um, but they were considered essentials, essential businesses. So, man, my garden looks amazing. <laughs> I spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time gardening. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> so we never really did a hard lockdown. You got to think about that. In other parts of the country too, it wasn't uniform. Uh, other parts of the country stayed relatively open, uh, and like they should have, because in their co open spaces. Um, you know, they didn't have that many cases, but of course we didn't know anything about this coronavirus. So it was hard for us. Uh, it was hard for us to kind of, to, to know what was going to happen. So w we didn't really do a hard lockdown. Uh, number four, uh, the entire country embraced this concept because they learn in the report and you have to remember they learned from SARS in 2003. Everybody in Asia wears masks. It's not, it's a social norm. Even at, when it's not a pandemic, it's a social norm. They, um, the second you have a cough or cold or sneezing, or even if it's just the flu season, they will wear masks because they have come to, um, to, to get very used to the, this, um, uh, these pandemic, these viruses and stuff. So it's not frowned upon. We, we think it's weird to wear a face mask, all right? I'm gonna demonstrate what you need to do here in a second uh, with these face masks. So they really readily adopted face mask wearing. And now, because they did it right, fast forward, you know, eight months later, they don't wear masks for the most part. People are going out, most of the time, they don't wear masks unless and they've gone back to their normal. Their normal is to wear a mask once you feel like you're sick. But no, but un, un people who are healthy, they don't wear masks, right? It's much more um, uh, socially accepted. But we, for some reason in America, we're just like, you're taking away my rights. You're taking away my freedom. I can't breathe. This thing, I can't breathe. Oh, you big fucking baby. You're such a big, tough man, aren't you? You know, like it's unbelievable. Oh, but Dr. Vong, you're a doctor. This is so unprofessional. You don't you understand that some people, you know, they really like I really have a medical breathing problem. OK, well, then stay your ass home. Dr. Vong, that's rude. You know, some people are like, you know, I have severe anxiety and severe PTSD because this happened and I was in, and I can't wear this mask because it reminds me back. And I'm like, it really, really this I wore a much thicker mask during surgery than this uh, for hours. I didn't die. I mean, I'm five foot eight, 140 pounds. I'm five foot eight, 140 pounds. What's up, tough guy? You can't put this around your nose? Look at this. I went to the zoo yesterday. Most people were wearing masks. Some people, this is how you wear a mask, like that. Easy, can breathe. I can breathe good. I can talk good. I talk good. But I was at the zoo yesterday and some dingleberries wearing it like this. Don't know what this is. You know, shit comes out of the nose, but this makes it feel comfortable. And then some real idiots are wearing it like this. 
This isn't a mask. This is a chin strap. You know. All right, big tough guy. You got your grandmother there at the zoo. And you're wearing your mask like this. All right, that's good. Good. Get on you, man. Get on you, buddy. You know, it's not. It's not an interruption of your civil liberties, guys. They're not taking anything away from you. You're still a free American. You know, you still can do what you want. We've got other inalienable rights. This is called adulting. This is called adulting. And I know adulting is hard, but that's what it is. All right. Now, what I'm going to talk about is uh, number five. And this one's controversial because people won't do it, but it's totally necessary. They have cell phone tracing, cell phone apps. That, tr that tracks you, gives you updates, information, widely accepted in China, country of 1.4 billion people. They all signed up for it. Well, they didn't really have a choice. They used it. They got alerts, got data, etc. But Dr. Vong, that's China. That's not the U.S. In the U.S., people are like, oh, no, the government's spying on you. It's 5G. It's fucking 5G. Come on, man. Like, who are you kidding? has nothing to do with 5G. The coronavirus has nothing to do with 5G, idiot, moron. Put on your mask. No, no, they're tracking me. You have, you're kidding me, right? You, ha you carry this, this built-in tracking device in your pocket all the time. And somehow contact tracing or reporting numbers and that sort of stuff, somehow that's a, like a violation of your civil liberties. People are stupid. Most of your apps are made in China. It's a China virus. This is this whole thing here is Chinese made. Where do you think I freaking got these masks from? Amazon made in China. Come on. What's wrong with people? Adulting is hard. Adulting is hard. I get it. I get it. So, but you can believe our South Korean counterparts. South Korea ad adopted so say, no, that's China. South Korea got over it. Also use tracking apps. So one of the ways that South Korea got over it so quickly was they also used a tracing app that could quickly show them where outbreaks were happening, where the military needed to come in, shut down a, a place, et cetera, really quickly that the officials could really, and then the people complied. The people were like, oh shit, this is really happening. Yeah, let's stay home, grandma. Let's stay home, Uncle Billy. In America, if the, if the government said, hey, you know, we have this app on your phone and it shows your little region is hot with coronavirus, we need y'all to stay home. Americans are like, hell no. You better come get my rifle for my cold dead hands. Like, really? Come on, you're gonna die. This coronavirus, I'm gonna die sometime when the good Lord's willing to take me. I'm like, oh my God, really? That's, see people, words are cheap. Words are so cheap. When, I promise you, I've taken care of lots of people and lots of people, thousands of people, and sometimes they're near death. And I promise you, I really haven't had anyone near death say, I'm ready to go. I'm coming home. It's not like uh, Sanford and Sons. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, here I come, Elizabeth. No, it's always like, no, it's too soon. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to go. I got too much I want to do. I want to see my grandbabies. See these loud mouths who sit here and say shit like, arm up, militia time. Like, just wait until, wait and see, wait and see. You'll see. That's it's just not. It's ridiculous. We're so spoiled. Adulting is hard. I get it. So we need like a, a tougher shutdown. We need better enforcement. We need better information. We need a unified messaging system. That's what we need. We need a national strategy on how this should be done. We need to let the scientists do their work and explain and dictate. Okay. The last thing that China did, um, and this is the big one, guys. 
Number seven. You know, number seven tip is always the big whammy. China did not open up too soon. China was locked down for a long ass time. China didn't open up till after we opened up. We shut shit down uh, in April, beginning of April, May, June. Beginning of June, we we're all like, oh, two months. We're done. Open her up. Open her up. I can't walk anymore. I'm getting sick of my kids. You know, before coronavirus, hey, Mary, what do you want? I want to spend more time with my kids. After coronavirus, come get these heathens from me. Come rescue me from my own damn heathens. And the teachers are all are going, yup, yup. You're the same bitch who came and complained about me because your brat little kid threw a potted plant at little Timmy and blamed it on me. Or your kid came to school stoned and got an F on their test and somehow I'm the bad teacher. Now all the teachers are like, now you know what it's like to take care of your own damn little bratty kids. America screwed up, man. Right? We opened up way too soon. No official's going to tell you that, but it's true because they're playing party lines. And I don't care what they tell you. You know, it was mostly most of the governors who placed the money, placed the economy before the people. And that's why we are the way we are. That's why we are the way we are. Don't spend the numbers in your favor, guys. New York City, yes, while it might New York, while it might be mostly Democrat, they were hit. They were blindsided by the coronavirus. No one knew what it was. They didn't know coronavirus was there. Their subway system, tourist destination, Broadway, crowded theaters, apartment living, people living in high rises, all using the same door handle, elevator buttons, mailboxes. Of course, they got hit bad, man. And now. Now we're trying to make that political and say, hey, look, this Democrat state has the worst numbers in the United States. What the fuck? Revisionist history? We all prayed for New York City. Do y'all forget? We were all scared to death. We were praying for Italy. We were praying that what happened to Italy didn't happen to the United States. But no, nope, we got what we wished for. It didn't happen to us. What happened to Italy did not happen to the United States. Worse happened. We got it worse. We're still fucking. Yesterday was 56,000 fucking new coronavirus cases. 56,000. Eventually, the numbers are going to get so bad. Doctor Wrong. The deaths aren't going up like they did before. The deaths aren't going up because it's just these college students and these, these young kids who went to beaches and blah, blah. Dude, eventually, the numbers will get so high again. It will get to grandma and grandpa. It will get to your fat ass. It will get to the diabetics. It will make its way to Uncle Billy. It will make its way to the infirm. It will. The numbers will get so big. I remember doing this video back in July maybe where I was like, where are you, dickhead? We were arguing about masking up. Who remembers July? We we're talking about mask holes. I got so much hate about me. You cannot infringe my rights, Dr. V. You shouldn't be talking. Like, dude, you got more tattoos than you've got teeth. Why are you talking? Why do you think you suddenly know about science when you could barely pass basic, basic sciences in fifth grade? Right? Come on. Get real. You shouldn't be talking. You're not a virologist. Like you don't even, you didn't, you don't even, you, you didn't even go back for your GED, Bubba. What's wrong with you? Who remembers July? We were talking about masks. And that was the big argument about masks, wearing masks. And I, I did this, I did this one video. I said, look, the numbers are so big. The numbers are so big. Like, how do you feel? Like these numbers are lying. Okay. Well, what's, what's the number? We hit a hundred thousand cases. How much are they off by? I don't know, but I know they're lying. Well, give me a number. How much are they off by? 20%. All right. Well, we just passed 100,000. What's 
20,000? So how many people died? 80,000? How do you feel? Listen, at some point, the numbers get so big, all of your stupid conspiracy theories, they're overcharging, they're marking down COVID so they can get paid more. Are you fucking kidding me? At what point do you wake up and you go, oh, hell, 7 million people? Come on now. At some point, the numbers get so ridiculous. 212,000, 215,000 Americans alone have died. More Americans have died from COVID than all of the wars, Vietnam, Middle East, 9-11 combined. World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Middle East, Afghanistan, and 9-11 combined. More Americans have died from coronavirus. Oh, you're not making me wear my mask. What is wrong with you? How do we get through to y'all? You'll see, Dr. Vong, it's going to go away November 4th. The fuck is going to go away? Are you a special kind of stupid? What is wrong with you? Like the virus does not know politics. The virus does not know the time of day, much less the, you know, the day of the week. It does not know November 4th. And on top of that, it doesn't know if you're American or if, or if you're Italian or if you're English or if you're Chinese or what part of the world you're in. What is, what is wrong with you? Now listen, I need everybody here who's watching who has a grain of, of common sense with you. Cause you guys all, we all have one of them in our friends and family circle, <laughs> at least one. We need to go, hey, listen, listen, Aunt Sally. Like that's not fixing this. That sort of talk is not fixing this. We gotta adult up. I don't want it to, I mean, I, I want to go out too. I, you know, I want to go back to normalcy or new normalcy. My four-year-old is about to start in-person classes in a couple of weeks here in Houston. We got our numbers down below 600 or so a day. Canada's freaking out. The whole country of Canada has 2,000 cases a day, and they're like, oh, my God, we're on fire. <laughs> but Americans are like, 50,000, it's a hoax. I don't know nobody. And now they're starting to say, well, I do kind of know a couple, but they recovered. You see, eventually you're going to know somebody that died. You keep that shit up. Okay. So what I want to do is talk about um, what you can do to protect yourself. Okay. What's going to come? I was predicting, and I'll do some more predicting for those of you guys still watching. Predictions. Predictions. Um, New York City, Boston, New Jersey, uh, about to get second wave. Now, they crushed their first wave. Well, the United States as a whole has not crushed its wave. Has, we are still on our first wave. Not on our third wave. Not on the, We are still on our first wave. But there are little pockets like New York City where they really – got the numbers way back down to 100 cases a day. The New York City's back up to 600 cases a day. New York City, uh, largest city in America, back up. Still relatively low, but but they're being aggressive. They're, they've already dialed back on some schools, starting to close down bars and restaurants again. And yeah, you gotta make these hard choices. You gotta make these hard choices that says, you know, like maybe like I, um, you know, my restaurant might not survive. This play theater, this theater might not survive. That's right. It's called adulting. New York City, Boston, New Jersey, about to get their second wave. You'll see. You'll see. Wisconsin's a distraction. Wisconsin is hot. I get it. The numbers are bad. The larger cities, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Minnesota, the, that sort of places. But, but the people are really spread out. They're not congested like in New York City and Boston area so in new jersey the most densely populated area in america is northern new jersey where people live and commute back and forth from uh, to new york city right so new jersey upper new jersey you guys about to get a bad second wave all right so what can we do about it 
Let me tell you what you can do about it. Now, pay attention. Number eight, number nine is really what you're here for, quite honestly. You must, you must underline, start wearing both a mask and a face shield. Now, when they first told us to start wearing masks, I was one of the first people to start wearing masks, and it felt weird. I'd go out there, and I'd have this mask on, and no one else had a mask on, and they looked at me funny and whatever. I was like, dude, this is your future. This is April. I was like, this is your future. You're going to have to wear this mask. You know, um, I ordered a whole box of masks. Look at this. This box of 50, 50 pieces of mask is like $10 on Amazon, guys. Three ply, see, get the three ply, loop over your ear. It hurts, a little, you know, you get used to it. You know, you can find a good fitting mask, nice and tight, right? There's a little bit out on the side, so it'll sneeze backwards, but this is all you need. This is all you need. You don't need the, you don't need the fancy mask with a breathe hole. Those are actually worse. The little breathe hole actually lets virus and stuff out. You don't want that. You don't want the tube sock that goes over your neck. You guys know the tube sock that goes over the neck that you kind of sleeve up. Those are the worst. Those are worse than not even wearing a mask. So the 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 condom looking ones. <laughs> you got a condom on your face, dude. The turtleneck ones, those don't work. The the especially the shiny slick ones like the lycra material, those are worse than not having one. Don't wear those. Just get one of these. A box of 50, guys, 50. This will last me <laughs> for the next two fucking years that we're going to be fighting this coronavirus. Two years. This is what you need. Order it off Amazon. I don't have enough. I mean, I'm not making any money. I'm not, I'm not an affiliate. Link. Now, here's what you got to do. Starting if you're up north when it's winter, when it's winter time, um, if it's already cold where you are, you need to start wearing both a mask and a face shield. Right. I'm in Houston. It's 90 degrees today. Swear to God. Um, and um, so I'm not doing it yet. But look what I've ordered. And there's different forms of this. There's different forms of this. So this is um, a face shield that has a headgear. I'm going to open it for you in a second. It has two headgears, two headgears and I think 20 shields. Mm. And yes, they came from China. Everything comes from China. You just gotta get over it. That's that's the dealio. All right. And you can buy ones with the sponge. It doesn't matter. The shield doesn't matter. It's not that important. It, they have ones with sponge. They've got you can make one at home. But my point is you're gonna start wearing one. Okay. And hey, let's open this together. I ordered this. It came in a couple days ago. I didn't open it because I wanted you, I wanted to open this online with you. Okay. So eyeglasses are not a bad idea either, but do this face shield. So let's do this together. I got two because my girlfriend, Erica, she's so beautiful. I haven't broken the bad news to her, but she's going to have to wear one. So seriously, this kit, this kit has two headbands and like 20 shields, like 12 bucks, 12 bucks. It's got this, okay, so this is adjustable back. Whoa, that's too big. So you're just gonna adjust this here. Ooh, easy. That was so easy. Oh, too tight. Dr. Wong's got it too tight. Get a little bit looser. Get a little looser now. Don't be shy. And listen, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not making any money. Like this is, I'm just telling you what I wore. All right, that one's kind of cloudy. I don't like that, right? It's a little foggy. Oh, this one's clearer. It's got little holes on there, okay? So now you just poke, I'm assuming. It's gotta be simple enough for Bubba to understand how to do it. So see, these holes, these holes line up. So you just pop it in there. I am literally opening opening this for the first time showing you guys this it just pops right along here right there and that's it and then you adjust the band on the back and you do this number you can you can increase it Ooh, i can see you okay walking i get in 
put it down. Okay, look, it's covering all the way to my side, right? It's got eye covering, eye protection. I'm gonna wipe this down because it's a little hazy. But here's what's gonna look like. This is your future, guys. This is all winter long. As long as you are going out in public and it's cold outside during the influenza season. Okay, why, why this, Dr. Vong? Because you're about to have the coincidence because I talked about this in friggin' June. Who remembers when I said this in June, right? Um, you're gonna have to have um, the coincidence of, I don't know where your keys are. Mr. Jones, I need to all right. Um, so you're having the coincidence of allergy season, which I've got all seasonal allergies, influenza, influenza, the flu, the regular flu season. All right. And, um, and coronavirus. And you don't know what it is. Now, if you're going out in public and it can be grocery shopping, it can be a walk in the park, it can be whatever. You're just going to be, the number of people who are going to be sneezing and coughing is going to dramatically increase because of um, allergies and and flu. Now, some people say, but Dr. Vong, don't you think that people are wearing masks? And so therefore, the flu season is not going to be as bad this year. I'm telling you all, the flu season is going to, it's 20 fucking 20. What do y'all think? The flu, like 2020 is going to go like, ha ha. They've had it so bad. I'm just going to let them go off the hook. They've had it so bad. I'm not, I'm going to give them a really mild flu season. Or do you think 2020 is going to go? Yeah. Fuck them, man. Fuck those humans. They, they need to learn a lesson. Which one, which one or would you pick? You know, the answer, the answer is 2020 is going to fuck us up. Okay. It's going to be a very virulent strain of influenza a and b it's going to be very it's going to spread it's not it's not going to because americans don't care we don't care we're like you think people are wearing masks they really aren't they're wearing masks like this hey i don't know why i got the flu i always wear a mask sure you did i always wear my chin strap i don't know how i got the flu ridiculous right so this fall, here's what you're gonna look like. Let me tell you your future. Until winter goes away, you're gonna look like this person. And I promise you, I'm ready. I know when I'm walking around and look, oh, too far, too far, doc. You gotta cover it. I know when I'm walking around and I'm sporting this, but you know what? This is what we have to do in medicine. You know, when we have a high fluid case that we are expecting um, a lot of stuff like surgery, we wear masks, we wear goggles, you know? I wore my surgical goggles, you know? Face shield if I needed it, you know? Trauma cases. So we're used to it. Now, if you think that just the mask by itself is weird, wait till you walk around like this and people start looking at you funny. How are you going to feel? Hashtag adulting. Hashtag responsible. Hello? 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 Anybody here? Now I'm going to tell you what. The second you walk out like this, there are some benefits to looking like this, you know. There are some benefits looking like this. Once you walk out, once you walk out into the restaurant or into the, uh, you know, the grocery store, you look like this. People are going to like, whoa, back away from you. People are going to back away from you, and they're going to assume that you're some sort of biohazard. Like, you're really sick. Like, nope. I just know what's coming down the road. Okay? So wear both a mask and a face shield if you are in um, the um, colder climates. Okay? Mask and face shield. Now, we already have influenza. It's here. You just haven't heard about it yet. I'm telling you, we already have positive cases of influenza. So let me, what number am I on? Eight, nine, 10. We already have cases of influenza. All right. So listen, listen to me guys. 
no no more no more comments about oh this flu season is going to be bad no more when flu gets here it's going to be bad flu is here y'all just haven't heard about it yet we have positive cases of flu in fact watch this comment if you're in the healthcare industry i i got the face shield on amazon everything you can get everything off amazon doesn't matter just get some sort of face shield Comment if you are in the uh, healthcare industry and you already have positive flu cases, positive flu, influenza, seasonal flu cases. All right. Flu is here. If your doctor recommends you get the flu shot, um, I recommend that. I don't get the flu. It's Crystal LeBron. Yep, we were already seeing flu in the hospital. See? Yep, positive cases in Chicago, Virginia. Carrie Jacobs. Yep, flu is already here. Flu is here. Here you go, Mary Jaco. The VA in New Mexico has flu cases. Now I know Mary, and I was in New Mexico. There you go. Bob Berger, where'd Bob go? Bob Bogger, Booger, Ohio does. Uh, ERRN, the flu season is here. See? So, um, flu is already here. You have to mask up. Now, why? Why is this not enough? Well, because you still expose your eyes. You have mucous membranes inside your eyes in here. That's why you got to wear a face shield. And when someone sneezes, it's just numbers, guys, just numbers. The more people are going to be out there, more people are going to be sneezing due to allergies. They're going to be coughing, sneezing due to the flu. And um, people are frustrated. Watch this. You're going to get cases where people will purposely sneeze or cough on somebody else you're going to get some dickheads who are frustrated, angry, and scared, and they're going to purposely sneeze and cough on people. Okay. So, um, number 11, frequent, uh, rapid testing. And I'll do, I'll, I'll do another video on, uh, rapid tests, the different types of testing, but we need more testing, not less testing, you know, uh, it's the bat. It's the kid who's bad at math who says we have more cases because we test more than everybody else. No, because <laughs> here, here, here's here's the point. It's the positivity rate that's important. All right, our leader, the White House, says we have more cases than anybody in the world because we test more than anybody else in the world. Let me ask this question, dickhead. If you had, if you tested a million people. If you tested a million random people and the positivity rate was 0%, how many cases would you have? Zero. If you tested 100 million times, 100 million people, and the test rate, positivity rate was zero, how many cases do you have? Zero. See, it's not the more testing. That's really stupid. It's not more testing. It's the positivity rate. The problem is in Houston in July, our positivity rate got up to 25% in Houston. And that's when Dr. V said, I am leaving Houston for July. When, the, when one in four Houstonians who were testing were testing positive, I said, I'm going to Albuquerque where it's nice and cool. We're gonna go camping and hiking. We need more frequent testing. And in July, when things were hitting the fan, who remembers you had to stay, sit in your car, wait three, four, five hours. It was awful. We need more frequent rapid testing with rapid results, not less, okay? So what I wanna do now, that's it for my talk. Did you got it? You got it? Coronavirus, uh, what China did, was they locked down really hard. We didn't lock down hard. They were locked down for a long time. We opened up way too freaking early. They did tracking on an app on your phone. 
They um, shut down their borders and, and people who came to visit, they quarantined them in hotel rooms for 14 days and followed them, didn't let them out. They bolted, they, they welded people inside their homes and they didn't let them out when they were in hot zones. If you lived in a hot zone, they barricaded you inside your house and did not let you out. Um, they, everyone, universal mask wearing, right? And now they've come back to normal relatively normal lives. I played that broadcast for you, which was CBS Sunday morning news today, this morning. You can check that out. And now uh, my prediction, uh, which I've been telling my challenge people for about three weeks now, is that New Jersey, a month now, New Jersey, New York City is about to be a hot spot. Boston, you can add Boston to that mix, about to be hot spots in upper New Jersey and Chicago because of the winter, but mostly density of people. Boston, New York City, very dense populations. You got to be careful. Upper New Jersey, the densest uh, population uh, in the United States is, is Upper New Jersey. Okay. People are crammed in. Okay. That's how it happens. And so you need to wear, if you're in a cold and influenza, the seasonal flu is here. It's already here. It's not coming. It's here. You need to wear, start wearing both a mask and the sexiest fuck face shield. I would put like a little sticker on here that says sexy AF. I would put your website on here, marykay.com slash lovable gin. <laughs> put your Mary Kay website up here. It's advertising. Why not? Put your, put, put the, the, you know, get one of those label makers and put your passion party here. Put your slinging dildos here. Put your uh, essential oils there. Might as well as advertise. Everybody's looking at your freaky self. But you know what? You're going to stay healthy. You're going to live to fight another day. You're going to get to reopen your business. You're going to see your kids grow up, your grandbabies grow up. You're going to have finally you know, get to get to go on a date with Fabio. You get to kiss Thor. You get to ride on the beach on horseback like you've always wanted to. Promise you. Nobody's ready to go see Jesus. It's that old saying that says everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I promise you all of these boastful bastards and their loud mouth obnoxiousness, they don't want to die. They say they do, but they don't. That's it. What I want to do right now is talk about my rapid test test kits. If you're not interested in hearing about it, you can hop off. If you are wanting to hear more, then I'll show you my workroom here in a second. So uh, back in July, a friend of a friend said, hey, we have these rapid test kits. You should check them out. They give you results in 10 minutes. I was like, 10 minutes? And he's like, yeah, but he sells them to businesses and he sells a thousand at a time and he has um he actually hires he's contracted with nurses who come out there and they test all the employees and and anyone who turns out positive you can isolate them put them off take them out of commission and then you can continue with your business and you'll stay in business that way and i was like well who do you send the lab do you send it to a lab he goes no you just read it so it actually here's a test he goes you just uh read the test and you get the results back in 10 minutes and you'll know and I was like, really? How's that work? He goes, you just do a finger prick. You just prick your finger and you do it like this. And, and I was like, well, why do you need a nurse? He goes, well, it involves blood. So I have to do, you know, we need a nurse. And I said, but um, I said, but that's no different than a diabetic checking their blood sugars. This is just like a diabetic, you know, it's a finger prick thing. And so he says, I know, but we can't do it. I said, well, I'll fucking do it. So I put together these rapid test kits. This will give you 10 minute results. It's a safe, secure at home. It's reliable. It's fast. It's 95% accurate. The nasal swabs are only 70% accurate. I promise you the athletes, the government, they've been using this, right? Not the white house. The white house has not been using this one. They've been using a different one, which is highly uh, unreliable. This is 95% accurate. It gives you 10 minute results. You do it safe at home. I do not recommend you use it for travel because, you know, they have their own regulations. You're, it's not to go back to work. Your employer has their, its own regulations. 
This is for home use, just like a pregnancy test. Now, if you took a pregnancy test at home and you were positive, what would you have to do? That's right. You would have to call your doctor just like this. So if this comes out positive, you need to call your doctor. They'll confirm it. But as long as it's negative, you can test your friends, your family. Y'all can get together. If you're a grandmother, you haven't held your grandbaby. If you're going to have Thanksgiving, if you're going to have Christmas holidays, if you are a teacher and you're scared and you want to stay home, dude, this is a great business, right? For like homeschooling. Let's say, let's say you want to homeschool and, te and teach like six kids. You say, hey, I'll teach your six kids for $40 a day. But every any, any adult who's dropping them off has to pay for a test kit, right? You have to get tested. So for um, I wholesale these for you at $50 a test. Now these are selling online for up to $250. Up to $250 is what one of these will cost. But I'm the only one who put a kit together. I'm, I have everything you need. I have a small buffer. I have a test. I have the, the Lancet that you use to prick your finger with, a pair of gloves, alcohol swab, alcohol swab, alcohol swab, Band-Aid. It's all in there. It's everything you need. And you basically do the test yourself and you read the results. I send you a video on how to do it. I send you infographics as reminders and you get results, right? No lab is needed, 95% accurate. And, um, but if you haven't held your grandbaby, if you haven't seen your mom or dad, order a set. You can do it. Uh, you know, these cost up to $250. But for one test, you can find them online for $150 to $200, $250 a test. But no one has a kit. I will send you these kit. I wholesale them to you. $50 a test. $50 a test. Minimum order of $40. That's $2,000. I know some people don't have $2,000 hanging around. I, you should have listened to me when I told you money was important. Um, but you can keep 10 for yourself, sell the other 30, and make all your money back plus some. I recommend to people to sell these for two for 250 or five for 500. For the people who've ordered from me, I recommend they sell them two for 250 or five for 500. Let's say you sell five for 500. That's 100 a test. You're paying 50 a test. You're doubling your money. You're turning your 2,000 into 4,000. You're turning 2,000 into 4,000. And you want to get into this before I have my own website up. If I, the second I have my website up and I say, yo, bitches, go get, go get the test. Go, go to my website. Check it out. But I don't want that. I want you guys to go to facebook.com slash Dr. Vong, facebook.com slash Dr. Vong and say, Dr. Vong, message me, message me, Dr. Vong. I want 40 test kits. I want 40 test kits. Then I know you know that the price is 2000 You don't waste my time. All right. Let me take some questions real quick. AC, look at that. AC ordered tests. And now she's like, I need to reorder. I need to reorder. Steve, how now they're going to make next month who doesn't fear monger? Sorry, I didn't quite All understand. right. There you go. Repeat it? All right. Maybe I should read questions before that. Um, I'm not sure I understand. Sign up, Siri. I've seen rapid selling tests sell for five to twenty-five. But it takes longer to get results. Fifteen to twenty from no well-known labs. Well, we can see. Um, if you think so, if you think so, but I don't. Insurance doesn't really pay. You'll see. Uh, that's what it takes sometimes. Yep. How bad do you think UK is getting? Well, Elves, it's bad. I mean, in the peak in, in April, you guys had uh, on average 5,000 to 5,500 cases a day. 5,000 to 5,500 cases a day, 1,000 deaths a day. You're at 15,000 cases, 15,000 cases, right? And so, yeah, 15,000 cases. Now, the death rates isn't going up as fast. I can do another video on that, but that's basically due to the younger age um, popu that's getting diagnosed, but also we have better farmers, better treatments, better therapeutics. But eventually, it'll get caught up. What is the percent of false negatives and false positives? Uh, with uh, this rapid test, very low. I can send you the, the uh, FDA paperwork on it. 
It is, there is no, there are no FDA approved coronavirus tests. There are no FDA approved coronavirus tests. They are all on the emergency use list. So EUA. So my test is on the EUA. My kits, these tests are on the EUA. So uh, that's the most quality that, that you're going to get. All right. Yeah, you're De Debbie right. You're, you're correct. Some areas are back in lockdown in UK. Um, some places are starting to, you know, they're just now closing down the pubs. Cindy's frustrated with COVID idiots, but you're, you're right. Um, I don't know, Rodney. I wouldn't. I, I just do Facebook lives like this. Um, Ying Yang, emergency use authorization. That's right. Yep. It's not coming. Cold and flu season is not coming, Kim Roke. It's already here. It is already here. Uh, Okay, let's see, some questions here. Not really seeing questions pop up on my feed. Get your flu shots and wear your masks for sure. Uh, I don't take the, see, I don't wanna take the flu shot. I don't take the flu shot either. Um, I think I have people reordering to resell. Uh, no, this is the perfect time to get the flu shot. If your doctor recommends it, uh, I don't. I don't do it. Here you go, AC. Yes, we are having staffing shortages due to flu season. See, it's our flu season's already here. Flu season's already here. Helena Voss, what is your prediction on Florida? Trouble. Trouble. Your governor reopened everything, like no restrictions, as I understand it schools back it's stupid um it's not good not good marcy why are you so awesome because i surround myself with awesome people like you marcy vidala that's why uh, mm -mm. why can't doctors diagnose covid without positive tests when currently true negative or 40 percent Do, do. do you see a spike in Arizona with the flu season? I see a spike in, in uh, every place. Every place. Okay. Okay. Oops. I had a good question here. Oops. Where did it go? Here we go. Do you think glasses and masks are sufficient or full face shield? I would get a full face shield. I would get a full face shield because people are crazy, crazy. Um, I, you look cute with your glasses though, Rose. Those are cute glasses. Um, if you want goggles, you really need that side protection. These face masks, I'll put my face mask back on. Here's what I want for those of you just now joining. I highly recommend if you're in a cold season, cold climate area right now, you wear both the face mask and some sort of face shield. But here's the edge of the face shield. You see where it is? It's all the way back to my ear. The whole, the whole covering is all the way back to my ear. If you wear glasses, because I used to wear glasses, they just barely kind of come up to your the edge of your eye. So I really recommend face shields. Okay. Uh, let me see. I just had a reverse sleeve last week, suffered art. Don't know what a reverse sleeve is. How about ear protection? Okay. How come you don't get the flu shot? Shit doesn't work for me. But I'm not going to go against what your doctors tell you. So if, if they tell you to get the flu shot because you're high risk, I'm young, I'm healthy. I don't take any medicines. I'm not that young. I'm 48. This is green tea. When I was required to take flu shot during med school and residency, my flus got worse and worse and worse. And then I quit. I haven't had a flu shot since 2004. Will COVID ever get under control? Um, no, it's endemic here. 
It will be with us for a long, long time. Any other questions? Okay. Should we cancel Daughter Quintanera in August? Come on, in 2021. Not yet. College students are a hot mess. There's been, to date, there's been almost 200,000 cases of coronavirus in colleges. 200,000 cases of coronavirus in colleges. TA, in-person classes, if I wear a mask, face shield daily, why should I get the flu shot? You don't have to. Everything's voluntary. I'm high risk but never got the flu shot. Should I do it now? If your doctor tells you to, I would um, seriously consider it. No, we need to have the elections. Elections have never been canceled. Does America have similar hygiene standards to Australia? They're they're assholes, PETA, quite honestly. We're we're just a country full of assholes. Big fan, respect you and all your advice and words of wisdom. Is it true the hospitals are seeing spike in numbers again? Um, yeah, it's very true. We are nowhere um, near, we like in the United States, we're at 56,000. The smaller communities like Wisconsin, their hospitals are in trouble. They're sounding the alarm. Um, we're seeing cases go up. Um, any COVID immunity yet? Oh, you know, this is a good question, Laura, and I can do this. Um, so far, we're not sure. Uh, I have people who are testing with, with my rapid test who have a positive coronavirus test who now their antibodies are disappearing. I have a friend who had it in July, caught it on July 4th. I tested her and she tested positive with the IgG. Her antibodies showed up, IgG antibodies. I need to retest her now, actually. She actually, um, she just had surgery. So they tested her just for positivity and she was negative, but I wanna retest her for her antibodies see what's happening there. Uh, how many deaths? Why can't, uh, okay. When do you think we will get a good vaccine for Corona? Uh, we won't have a um, vaccine until the next, next spring and it won't be widely distributed to the US population until late summer. 2021, late summer 2021. So, and then we don't even know if the immunity is gonna last. Most of the vaccine candidates require two, two doses. And you know what that means. Most of the people aren't gonna get their second dose. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty nasty. Uh, and also, you know, I can, I can talk about your immune system with uh, antibodies and T cells and all that stuff uh, later. Um, Tests are perfect if you want to have uh, family get together and be safe. That's awesome. Michael Horn's absolutely right. Uh, that's what they're intended for. Because I saw this, my friend was using these to test businesses. And I was like, this is a finger prick. This is just like if you're a diabetic and you check your blood sugar. If you came to my office back when I was practicing and, um, and, I, uh, and I said, hey, your hemoglobin A1C is six, you're diabetic. Uh, I would, you need to start checking blood sugars. I would have my nurse come in, show you, not even my nurse, my, my nurse assistant would show you how to prick the finger, put it on your little test strip, put your test strip into your little machine and, um, tell you, you know, that's how you check your blood sugar. So I was like, that's all we, that's what we need to do. So I put these test kits together and my friend was like, doc, I can't do it, but you can, you're a doctor. You, you have a, a, a degree. I was like, well, I don't have a, I'm not a practicing doctor, but I'll do it. I'm retired. So I know what, what's needed to be in here. I got the test. I got the alcohol swab. I have a band aid. I have a pair of gloves, but most importantly, I have the buffer solution and the uh, Lancet. So if you open this test kit, um, you'll get this. So you get this thing. And I don't know if y'all can see, I got to freaking figure this out. It says COVID 19 at the top. There's a C for control line, a G for IgG. It's a, this is an antibody test, an M for IgM. For um, IgG shows if you have antibodies, you were previously infected. The G, the uh, that's IgG. 
The M for IgM shows if you're actively infected. You literally prick your little finger, dink, doesn't even hurt. You can't feel it. You have a little drop of blood. You will put it in the square hole, put it in the square hole like that. Then you'll take this buffer solution. I'll do it. I'll do, um, I'll do one later. I'll show y'all. Put it in this buffer solution. Okay. And, um, in this well right here, this bottom well, you put this buffer solution in the bottom well and it reads up and the blue line turns pink. That's how you know you have a valid test. If you have actually, you know what? I, I can, t I can actually show you all. <clears throat> okay. All right. I don't know if y'all can see this. Can y'all see that? Okay. So here's IgM. If you have a red line at the bottom on IgM, that means you're actively infected. Okay. IgG is the middle line. That means you've had it in the past. You can have all three, the control line, IgG and IgM. That could mean that you've had it in the past and you've caught it again, or it could mean that um, you're starting to form antibodies and your IgMs are going away. If all you have is the control line, that's negative. That's what you want to see. If the control line never changes colors, if it stays blue, if it stays blue, then that's an invalid test. And that gives you the results in 10 minutes. That's how you read it. You prick this, you take it at home, you read the results in 10 minutes, you don't send it to a lab. You can, these are um, the test alone, you won't have a kit because I'm the only one who sends you a kit. If you go online, you look, you try to find these rapid tests, you see them for sale for about $150 to $100 to $250. Right now, I'm wholesaling these to my fans. You get one kit for 50 bucks, minimum order of 40. You have to order 40 to get a $50 price break. You can order for them from me for two for 250, five for 500, but if you have the means, you can get some people in together. You can split the cost. You can do what you need to do. $50 each, minimum order 40. You can resell them all. You can double your money. You can, that, I know that's $2,000 and you resell them and you turn it to 4,000. You keep a thousand yourself. Doc, get me 3,000 worth. I'll send you 3,000 worth. You turn that into 6,000 and then you keep 2,000 back and say, Doc, give me $4,000 worth. I give you $4,000 worth. You turn that to 8,000. You see, this is a great business. It's a great business. Everybody's going to need it. Everybody needs this little kit. Or you can, you know, you can keep, you can keep 10 for yourself, sell the other 30. That means you take your 2,000, you have 10 for yourself, and now you have 3,000. It's very simple. I'm, I don't have to do this, guys. You know, I could have a website where I could, some people that want to be ugly because they're, they're broke-minded people. I could have a website where I sell these for, you know, five for 500 and take all that profit. But why? I want you guys. I'm trying to help you guys. A lot of you guys have been out of business, out of work. A lot of you guys have been furloughed. A lot of you guys are laid off. A lot of you guys need a side hustle. A lot of you guys are scared about your future. You can take this at $50 a test, sell it five for $500 and you could make a tremendous amount of profit. Help yourself out. Could another thousand dollars a month help you? Could two thousand dollars a month help? Could another five hundred bucks help you? Why wouldn't you do this? Why would you talk ugly about me? You know, I don't know. That's just how people are. Same same people who won't do it. If you want to do it, message me, doctor, Facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. Go to Facebook.com. Go to Facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. Send me a message. Dr. Vong, I want 40 tests. I want you to write 40 tests so I know you know it's a $2,000 investment. Invest in yourself, guys. This is how we get through this. It's not by your head in the sand. It's by proactively testing, helping helping your better men. Dr. Vong, I feel bad about you know selling it for $100. On, dude, you're saving them 50 bucks. You're saving them anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks. Because otherwise they'll go online and they'll find some site that's not reputable. 
somebody sent me this message. It was like, oh, Dr. Bong, never mind. I found I found some test kits online. I was like, really? Where? No, oh, they're much cheaper than yours. Oh, really? Tell me where. She sent me this link to this website that is shady as fuck. Shady AF. I was like, are you kidding me? You're going to send these people $500? Did you read the reports? Did you read the reviews? The reviews were all good, but they were all like, like not even relevant. They were like, oh, I love coming to this blog. This blog is amazing. It's changed my life. I'm like, this is not a blog. Like it's a totally made up website. Anyway, like, dude, come on. Just admit it. You don't have the money. You misunderstood. So I'll say it again very clearly. It's $50 a test. Minimum order of 40 is the wholesale price. You can resell it for five for 500. You can double your money. Okay. $50. Go to facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. I'll be online for a little bit so I can fulfill your orders, answer your questions for the next 10 minutes. So go to facebook.com slash Dr. Vong next 10 minutes, uh, place your order. I'll be on for the next 10 minutes. Love you guys. Be safe. I'll see you tomorrow for my next update. Bye.